All right, so in a previous video, we looked at pulse width modulation and sort of what it was as a as a high level concept kind of thing. And then we've also looked at, in, in videos before that, we've looked at the full bridge converter. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna tie the concept of pulse width modulation or PWM with the full bridge converter uh, in a sort of, I guess, uh, I should say full bridge inverter, uh, since it'll be in a DC AC application. Um, but we're also going to take a look at another type of converter called the half bridge because the half bridge is also a popular uh, topology and it's very versatile and it's and it's good for the purpose of analysis because a full bridge is essentially just two half bridges connected together. So why don't we start first with the PWM operation of the half bridge converter. So the half bridge converter is essentially uh, we're going to we're going to do something here that they do for the purpose of analysis. Uh, and we're going to split the DC source into two sources. Okay, uh, it, it changes nothing about the functionality of the circuit, but it just allows um, the circuit to be analyzed a little differently. And in this case, I mean, it actually is required because the the output here uh, is taken like this. So this is our VAC. So this are AC terminals. We're going to call this, and we draw it on the other side so it'll be clearer, we draw this VDC over two, and then we say this is also VDC over two. So the total DC link voltage is still VDC, but we've just split it into two half sources, basically. We're gonna call this S1, and we're gonna call this S2. So uh, we're going to refer to the control signal as VS, and the carrier as VT, as we have in the past, and we're going to have the ampl amplitude modulation ratio or modulation index is going to be called k, right? So we're going to have we're going to have k then, uh, if you remember from that video, and if you haven't seen the video on PWM, then I'll link it in the description so you can take a look at that. But we say that k, this sort of modulation uh, index, amplitude modulation ratio, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes they call it ma as well in some textbooks. Uh, but here we're going to use k. And K is essentially the ratio between the amplitude uh, of VS, which is the signal, the control signal, and VT. Okay, and so VS and VT, uh, with these little hats, I guess, well, I, th I, said we, I think we said we weren't going to use the hats, so let's not use the hats, let's just use the capital letters. These are the peak amplitudes of the control signal and the carrier, respectively. Um, in most cases, VT, or the carrier, is usually kept constant. So maybe we can visualize this a bit better if we, maybe we use a better color rather than that. So if you have a carrier that looks something like this, so this is your carrier, and we'll say that this is, uh, this is VT, sorry, it's an uppercase T, right? So VT, and then you have some uh, signal, some control signal, this could be a sinusoid, it could be some slowly varying signal, it could be a DC even, it doesn't have to be anything actually, uh, or anything unique at least, it could technically be 0 2 I guess, uh, but this will be VS, right, so the ratio between the two is going to uh, dictate what the amplitude modulation uh, ratio is. So usually VT, the triangle carrier, is kept constant amplitude, right, so there's a constant carrier, or constant amplitude carrier, and it has a fixed frequency. And so the frequency of this thing, uh, we usually call it, I mean, depending on what you're looking at, it might be called FS for switching frequency. It might be called, uh, it might just be called F, but we're going to call this FS for now, okay? Uh, and so FS is the carrier frequency. And so it's important to distinguish between the carrier frequency and the fundamental frequency because VS can have a frequency as well. So if VS is a sine wave, uh, maybe we draw it a little bit differently so it actually looks somewhat like a sine wave. So if VS is like a sine wave like this, let's say, then VS has its own uh, frequency as well, right? So, uh, I mean, I guess, if just looking at it roughly, I don't know, I haven't really drawn it very clearly, I guess, but looking at that, then this here, we can call F, let's say, and that would be the fundamental frequency of the signal, right? Roughly speaking. So, it's important to distinguish between the two, is, is kind of the point here. So, it, as in the case with the half bridge, the, I mean, sorry, with, as in the case with the full bridge, the half bridge switches also have to switch in a complementary manner. So, when uh, VS is greater than VT, uh, well, we want to have, we want to use lower cases for both of them, right, because they are signals. So, when VS is greater than VT, then S1 is on, 
and S2 is off. And in the case where S1 is on, that would short this here, and that would open the bottom switch. And that would mean that uh, in that case, you have VAC equals one half, well, I'm running out of space, so maybe we just write VDC over two, okay? And now in the other case, when VS is less than VT, you have that S1 is off and S2 is on. And in that case, you'll have what? You'll have VAC equals minus one half. Well, why did I do it that way? Let's say minus VDC over two, okay? So essentially you would have here a square wave that would have an amplitude of VDC or it would vary between plus minus VDC. So the output fluctuates between plus minus VDC. Now, because this is going to output a square wave, this will be a square wave, so it'll look something like this, with a fixed frequency, obviously. But this will be VDC over two, and this will be minus VDC over two. But if you recall, in our previous discussions, we said that power is usually transferred at a, at a certain frequency, or at certain frequencies. In all the cases that we're going to look at, it's going to be transferred at one frequency, which is the fundamental. So at the fundamental frequency, you transfer some power. So then it's important to understand how the fundamental frequency of this signal uh, is modeled. Because right now we see a square wave. And we know that a square wave, according to Fourier analysis, a square wave is just a is a, is a superposition of sinusoids. And it is a very noisy and messy superposition of all these sinusoids. So there's a lot of harmonic content in a square wave. But we can only transfer uh, power at one frequency, really. So we need to make sure we understand how that single frequency varies with all of these uh, sort of relationships and such. So we can show that VAC1. So this is the first harmonic, right? So if you have a harmonic spectrum, for instance, this is the first harmonic, right? And so this would be if this was like a 60 hertz, um, or sorry, yeah, if this was a 60 hertz uh, signal, then you would have, this would be your 60 hertz frequency, right? A at higher frequencies, you would have different, uh, so like the second, the third harmonic, for example, would be 60 times three, so that'd be 180 hertz, and so on. So there would be, there would be integer multiples of this frequency, but VAC1 is equal to VS divided by VT, okay, times VDC over two. Okay, so if, let's say if, if VS is a sine wave, so that's VS sine omega T, right? So that means if our, if our uh, modulating wave or our control signal as it's called uh, in this context is a sine wave, then what we see is that VAC will also have sinusoidal characteristics, and it'll be VS over VT sine omega T times VDC over two. And if we kind of simplify stuff and move things around, because we know that we know that this thing right here is just K, so we can say that this is going to be K times VDC over two sine omega T, right? And so now we see that the amplitude of this fundamental component varies uh, sort of based on, sorry, I, I, one, one thing I guess is, is more technically correct is to call this thing, just to be consistent, is to call this lowercase VAC because this is the, this is the sort of waveform whereas that's the amplitude, right? So, so now what I can do is I can call this thing VAC one, and that's just a sort of nomenclature type of thing. I mean, it changes nothing about the concept. So let's call this uppercase VAC1 equal to KVDC divided by two. Now what this means is that the fundamental component of the uh, of, of the output voltage or the VAC side voltage will vary according to this type of relationship. So we know the peak amplitude of the fundamental component now. And this is true so long as k is less than or equal to one. Now k can be set to be greater than one and that's usually called overmodulation. Um, we're not going to get into the details of that, although you can um, operate converters under those conditions, but the, the control and the operation of those converters usually isn't linear, so it's, it's a little bit more uh, 
complicated to model, but we're not going to look into that kind of stuff um, for this discussion here. So that's for the half bridge converter, right? This is the half bridge converter we just looked at. So now let's just take it one step further and let's look at the full bridge converter, right? Because the full bridge converter is, is another converter that we've looked at in the past. And so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do the same thing that we did on the DC side here. We're going to split it into two uh, sources. And again, the reason why it will become apparent in a second when we discuss the uh, modeling, I guess, of the harmonics as we just did. And I'm not going to connect any load here, and I'm going to pull these terminals off to the side since we're not doing that, just so that the middle can be empty, I guess. So this will be S1, S2, S3, S4, as it has been in the past. We're going to call this node A. We'll call this B. This voltage here is obviously VAC, as it was before. And this is going to be VDC over 2. And this is going to be VDC over 2. So again, you have a total DC link voltage of VDC. You have this sort of ground point here. And this is a this is not necessarily a physical ground. What we're doing here is we're using this to analyze the circuit, but this does not necessarily have to exist here. It can, in some cases it does, but it's not necessarily physical. So my point is you can sometimes connect the ground here instead. But the reason I'm putting it in the middle there is for the purpose of the analysis that we're going to do, because we're going to look at the voltages VA and VB with respect to this midpoint. So I'm putting it there for this uh, thing here. So we see here that VAC is obviously equal to VA minus VB, right? So if we can find out VA and VB, then we can determine what VAC is equal to. So again, we have the same kind of conditions. We have, we've seen this switching before. And again, if you haven't seen this, uh, I'll link the full bridge video uh, in, the, in the description so you can look at that. But essentially S1 and S4 are going to switch at the same time. And S2 and S3 are going to switch at the same time. So they're sort of pairwise uh, switching here. So these two turn on, turn on or off at the same time, and these two turn on and off at the same time. And we still have the condition that both of these cannot be on. Well, and not, not, not just these two, but no two switches in the same leg can be on at the same time. So you have to have one on, one off, one on, one off. That's why we have that sort of diagonal symmetry. So when S1 is on, let's say S1 on, that means S2 is off. And if that's the case, you have S4 is on and S3 is off. So the, the, the top left and the bottom right are on and the top right and the bottom left are off, right? And under this condition, you'll have that VA is equal to VDC over two. And the way we get that is you say this connects here. So VA is this voltage of this node with respect to ground which is just VDC over two, right? And then obviously the, 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 the same is true for uh, uh, the other case, right? So uh, what we end up having is some technical difficulties with the button, but that's okay. Uh, what we end up having is we have this voltage VA here. We end up having that VB is equal to minus VDC over two. And the reason that that happens is because remember, this connects here and then this connects here. So VB, ends up being connected to ground through this, and the polarity of this dictates that it must be minus VDC over two. And if that's the case, then we know that VAC in this case will be VA minus VB, which is equal to VDC, right? Right. Next, we can do the same thing for the other case. So this is when, uh, I guess, if you were considering, uh, I guess, an analogous situation here, we can say that when v t, Vs is greater than Vt, this is true, and then when Vs is less than Vt, then this is true. So let's let's add that here too, just to be consistent. So let's say that this is when Vs is greater than Vt. Vt, okay? So Vs greater than Vt, this happens. Now, in the other case, we can say that when Vs is less than Vt, what happens? We have the opposite, right? So we have then S1 is off and S2 is on and S, I don't know why I wrote it that way there, but uh, S3, let's say, is on and S4 is off, okay? 
So in this case, the opposite can, uh, switches conduct. And again, this is not unique. You can have it the other way and it'll do the exact same thing because over a period you would have the exact same behavior. It's just you would have a different switch conducting for a different portion of the, of the period. So it can be the opposite as well. So, you, so don't think that these switching schemes are unique. They're not. What is unique though, or what must be satisfied is that this switch and this switch cannot be on at the same time. The same is true for the other two. And that this is a, there's a sort of diagonal uh, pairwise combination uh, of conduction states, I guess. So the they, they switch in diagonal pairs is the thing to take away from here. Okay, and so if that's the case, then we have that VA is equal to minus VDC over two. And we get that because S2 is conducting. And so if S2 is conducting, then this node A is connected to ground through this voltage source. And the same is true, well, I guess the opposite is true on the other side because S3 will be conducting. And for some reason we still have S1 and 4 conducting, uh, but we want the other two conducting. So node B will be connected to ground through this VDC. And that means that VA will be equal to positive VDC over 2. So VB will be equal to positive VDC over 2. And what that means is that VAC is equal to VDC in this case. Sorry, minus VDC. Because VAC, it's VA minus VB, right? Right. Now, applying the same sort of logic and reasoning as we did here, we can show the exact same thing that if we had a sinusoidal control signal and its amplitude was given by Vs and we have the carrier and all that kind of stuff, we can say that the fundamental component will do the exact same thing, but what's going to change is the fact that this Vac is equal to, well, it's equal, it, it varies between plus and minus Vdc. So it's plus minus VDC, whereas this one was between plus minus VDC over two. So there's a sort of factor of two difference between these. So what that, I mean, if, logically speaking, if we did the exact same analysis and the only thing that changed was this term, and instead of VDC over two, we had VDC, then that means that this final result would just be KVDC, right? So we can say then that the fundamental component in a full bridge converter switched with PWM is VAC1 would be equal to KVDC. And K obviously is between zero and one, right? And so this is true, again, for K less than or equal to one. So if K is equal to 0 0.5, then VAC, the fundamental component of VAC, uh, will have uh, 0 0.5, or the amplitude of that will be 0 0.5 times VDC. Now, there are also ways to or determine the higher order harmonics, because we've only talked about the fundamentals here. We've talked about one, right? So uh, the higher order harmonics that exist, uh, the third, the fifth, the seventh, ninth, and you can go all the way up to several uh, hundreds if you'd like, although it's usually not practical in most cases. Um, but what we're going to do is you can say that there are uh, there are sort of generalized tables that, 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 that have been developed, and these tables are... Uh, are, are, are not, I don't want to say difficult to determine uh, analytically, but they're usually, uh, they're usually determined using some type of numerical analysis or some type of simulation results or something. So they have tabulated sort of figures, and these tabulated figures that you see here are uh, basically normalized to whatever frequencies you have and whatever voltages you have, and you can use the voltages and the frequencies that you're working with in order to determine what the magnitude of the harmonic is at that point in time. So if we say that MF, MF is equal to F uh, over F1, let's say, let's call this FS because that's what we did at the top. F1 is the fundamental, right? FS is the switching frequency. So MF we call the uh, sort of the, so we have the amplitude modulation ratio, which was K, and MF is the frequency modulation index. Uh, and so this uh, is, a, is just a ratio between how much uh, larger the switching frequency is than the fundamental. And usually we want this to be much larger. And much larger usually means 20, 20 to 30 times, let's say, in a case like this. Although 10 times is where you can start to say that it's, it is sufficiently large. If you really want to get the, the best sort of operation, you usually want it to be, let's say, 20 to 30 times um, or some multiple uh, of that larger. 
And so if we do that, and based on this table, we can we can do the following. We can say that VAC, so the uh, we can say the H, the harmonic H, so this H is 1, H is 3, 5, 7, whatever. Uh, VACH is equal to VAH divided by VDC over 2, right? And so this means that VAH would be would be uh, some multiple, uh, or, 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 or VAC, I should say, is some multiple of VAH, uh, and the coefficients, as you see here, um, dictate sort of the magnitudes that you would expect. And, and VAH H is found from this table, obviously. And this, so this is for the half bridge, because it's VDC over 2. If you have a full bridge, you can just say it's multiplied by VDC. Okay, so again, with this table, you can calculate... Um, the higher order harmonics if you need to if you want to determine what the magnitude of a certain harmonic would be because it, there might be some resonance at that frequency there might be an expected disturbance at that frequency and so you can figure out what exactly your system will behave like given um, a certain set of parameters uh, and and those parameters are really just the voltages as well as the frequencies that you're dealing with so overall what we did was we looked at first the half bridge converter and we looked at how it would how its fundamental component would uh, sort of be modeled based on PWM and we looked at a bunch of different cases here and then we determined that the fundamental component so if this is a sine wave um, the fundamental uh, amplitude or the magnitude of that fundamental component would be K times VDC over 2 that would be a sine wave right and so if you want to generate like a 60 Hertz signal you would say that whatever my 60 Hertz signal magnitude should be then you can determine what your value of K should be and then VDC obviously will be fixed based on whatever your converter is, and so you can go from there, right? And so that's true for the uh, half bridge, and then we saw in the full bridge case that it's roughly the same, except you have uh, K times VDC, so so it's two times larger because you have, well, essentially you have double the switches, right? So, well, that's not necessarily, I mean, because the double the switches, but it's just that's the difference between the full bridge and the half bridge is that this is a differential connection between two voltages that are one half of VDC each, whereas this is a single connection and you can only ever be between one or the other. So here you have a sort of differential connection between these two legs. So that's really why it happens. So I shouldn't just say it's because it's double the switches, because you can have as many switches as you want, but it might not necessarily increase the voltage at the output. And then we looked at this. Um, sort of modulation index and we looked at that the fact that this is the magnitude of the uh, h harmonic that sounds kind of weird but harmonic h i guess we can call it um depending on whatever frequency relationships you have according to mf you can use the table and uh so yeah if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below i hope this was helpful like and subscribe to support the channel and we'll see you in the next one